Hi there. Today, I'm going to talk to you about data virtualization. Data virtualization is a key component of a data fabric architecture. If you haven't watched my video, then I will highly recommend that you go and watch data fabric demonstration video that I have on my YouTube channel. Data virtualization allows you to reduce data silos. It allows the end users to query different types of databases irrespective of the query language. Data virtualization creates a virtualization layer on top of all your different databases irrespective of where they reside. Your databases or data sources can be on cloud or they can be on premise. You can still virtualize those data sets and present it to the end users by putting governance and security on top of it. IBM's data virtualization service inside Cloud Pack for Data allows you to easily virtualize your different data sources, but still maintain the security and data privacy required for your organization. IBM's data virtualization service is tightly coupled with our data governance service, thus allowing you an end-to-end -end governance of your virtualized assets. Let me show you how easy it is to use the data virtualization service on IBM's Cloud Pack for Data. I have logged into Cloud Pack for Data. For me to start creating virtual assets, I first need to establish a connection to the data source. IBM Cloud Pack for Data ships a variety of different native connectors to the sources that you can connect to. You can filter the list of these connectors that are supported for a data virtualization service. If you don't find a source in this native connector list, you can still upload a JDBC driver and use a generic JDBC connection to connect to your sources. I have already configured a connection to DB2 on cloud source and a MySQL source. What I'm going to show you now is how you can virtualize assets across these different databases. I can do that by going into a data virtualization service. Here, I will add the connection that I have created in my platform connections and ensure my data virtualization service can talk to those databases. I've already configured my data virtualization service to talk to MySQL database and DB2 on cloud. I can also see these different databases in a constellation view so I know what databases I'm connecting to and how it is configured in my data virtualization service. I'm now ready to virtualize assets. To virtualize assets, I will go into the virtualize option of my data virtualization service. Here, I can filter the databases on the type of my database. So I can filter it, let's say I want to virtualize DB2 and MySQL, it will show me all the tables inside those two databases. I can also search for different tables. So let's say I want to do a virtualization of assets on mortgage tables. I can search for all the tables which are related to mortgage across those two different databases. Another key feature of data virtualization is schema folding. In schema folding, you can group tables with identical names. Think of tables such as a branch information across different geographies. You'll have the same branch table, but you don't want to query different branch tables and get data from different branch tables. Instead, you want to group those tables inside one schema and let the data virtualization do the trick of combining those tables in the background. Now, let's say I want to go and virtualize my mortgage customer table. I will add this table to the cart 
And inside the cart, I can then rename the table, I can change the schema, I can change the table name, but also I can change the column names. Now here, you want to provide a business friendly column names to the end users. Because data virtualization service inside Cloud Pack for Data is tightly integrated with our data governance service, which is Watson Knowledge Catalog, you can easily map the business terminology that you have defined in your catalog to the tables and the column names inside your data virtualization service. Once I have provided the column information, I've changed the table names, uh, I've provided the schema information, I can then publish this particular asset to add a project. So this is your analytics project inside the platform. You can just virtualize the asset and have it published inside the catalogs. So the end users can go and search for that asset or you can use it to assign it to a data request. So there are various options on how you can make the virtualized tables available to the end users. Now inside virtualized data, you can see I've got a mortgage customer table, which is a virtual table on GB2 on cloud and mortgage property, which is a virtual table in my SQL databases base. I can just click this uh, two tables and then join them. Here I have a good UI, a user interface to do a drag and drop. So I can select what is the key for my join. I can select the filter. So my where clauses uh, inside my join. I can select which columns I want into inside in, in my virtualized table. If I'm happy to do this using an SQL editor, I can also do it using my SQL editor. This gives me a flexibility to create the view and have more options such as group by. If I want to do uh, joins on three or four tables, I can do that using this SQL editor. Once you have run the view or created the view either using UI or the SQL editor, then you get the virtualized asset inside your virtualized data. So in here, I've created now a customer property, which is a virtualized asset across mortgage property in MySQL database and mortgage customer uh, in db on cloud. I can now then preview the data. I can view the table structure. I can view the metadata, which is there inside my table. I can also manage access and provide the information on which users can view the data inside this particular virtualized asset. Once I've created the asset, then I can go and provide information about whether I want to do cache management. So if I've got, let's say, multiple queries hitting the same table, I can create a data cache for that particular query. You can then go into monitoring sections. This is for your administrators to really monitor a data virtualization sub, sub, service. So it allows you to uh, you know, see what is my CPU utilization, memory utilization, different queries, how many queries are getting hit across my uh, virtualization service uh, and, and really view the performance and the health of the data virtualization service. You can create different reports. So you can uh, have a report for your administration, administrators which are published, let's say once every day which captures all this information, the admin information that you have here, like summary of your CPU utilization, your memory utilization, different uh, queries that have been uh, executed ag against data virtualization service. What are the performance metrics for those different virtual uh, queries across that virtualization service uh, and, and so on. And then lastly, obviously you have got user management, again, who gets access to a data virtualization service, which are the users uh, who can create a virtualized assets in the virtualization service. And finally, the connection information. This is the information I can give to the end users. I'll provide the JDBC string. I can provide the certificate. I can download the JDBC driver from this screen. And then I can take this information and configure a third party tool, let's say a reporting tool. So you can configure this in Tableau, Cognos, and use that tool to query against a data virtualization service. So in here, I'll demonstrate how you can use a third-party tool 
I, I'm using Razor SQL to query my data virtualization service. I've configured my DV service in here. I'll provide a user ID and password. And the good thing about this is because the data virtualization service is tightly coupled with data governance, I can provide data privacy on top of it. And now this user doesn't have access for sensitive information. So if I select here, if I run a query here, select star from, let's say, star from, what? Property. Yeah, so you can see here that you get the result sets, but not only you get a result set, but you get a result set with the masked information. So the custom identifier and ID column are sensitive, and those are masked for this particular user, and this masking is based on the rules that are defined in Cloud Pack for Data. There are different options for masking. So you can use, instead of just zeros, you can say, hey, I want to mask the data, but replace the values with similar values. So you will get a, a data available here, which is similar to custom identifier, but it's not a real data. So you can have those masking rules configured inside Watson Knowledge Catalog. I've now shown you how you can create virtualized assets, how it is uh, tightly coupled uh, with our governance service, and how easy it is to create a virtualized asset. I hope you have found this video useful. Until next time, please keep safe and be healthy.